Aikido is teaching people a way to protect yourself that is not about beating up anyone else, right? So it's not the goal. It's just how do I protect myself when confrontation goes awry? And ideally, through that process, I will learn to keep confrontation from, from getting worse. And what ideally Aikido wants to do is find a good result for that, right? And I would like to do it verbally. And so Aikido doesn't do a ton of training in this because that's not its main focus. But through the training, I kind of learned this way to like understand where you're coming from, right? Get a, an idea of you, right? So the idea of um, a subi to, to, to tie your energy and my energy together. And that sounds like hippie stuff, you know, but, but in truth, like what it's about is you have an intent, you have an idea, you have a way you see the world. I have an intent. I have an idea. I have a way I see the world. Is there a way that both of those can come together that's good and beneficial for you and me both, right? And then Aikido teaches a system that falls down from there, right? So, so you can't be reasoned with. So you come to attack me. And so I try to keep distance. When you try to attack me, I try to suppress your attack, right? So I try to in some way keep your attack from harming me. And I try to remove myself from the line of your attack. And then if it can't be resolved any other way, I will do the most limited amount of struggle I can to get out of there. That's what I want to do is to escape the situation. Now, if it got deeper than that, right, it was impossible for me to escape the situation. I believe Aikido is done as a system at that point. That's when you need to know jujitsu or you need to know mm. other things, right? Mm. But so Aikido, that's where Aikido spectrum lies. It lies everywhere from your intent and mind differ all the way down to you're actually got a hold of me. And then at that point, it's like Aikido's not training that anymore. And it's the same as if I went to a boxing gym and uh, I said to the boxing coach, hey, teach me how to do headlocks. He sure. would say, I don't teach that. I'm a boxing instructor, right? And so that's what I think Aikido instructors should say when people come and say, teach me jujitsu. It's like, well, I don't teach jujitsu. I teach Aikido, right? Which is not, sure. not the same kind of thing, you know? Hey everyone, so if you're following the journey uh, or this new channel for uh, some time now, you probably already are inquired and you know that for the past couple months I became interested again to look back at the Aikido world or, or even more so especially the Aikido philosophy uh, on one level to ask myself is there something I can salvage and basically just recognizing that you know, there are reasons why I became passionate about Aikido in the first place, and it did do me some good. You know, I, I obviously, yes, I bashed the martial aspect and so on, but that's a whole nother story. But there are good things there as well, and for a while I was super negative about the whole thing, and it's not a time I'm super proud of either. <laughs> and these days I feel not only inspired to revisit and ask myself the question and inquire on how the Aikido philosophy could be applied in the most practical way, even if we are for a moment leaving the martial arts aspect on the side. And another intention I have is um, I feel I'm at a stage where I don't want to be at war with the Aikido world anymore. I don't feel I am at war, but I know some quite a few people in the Aikido world hate me literally <laughs> and many misunderstand my intentions but long story short um, I feel like if we if we are to make any change at anywhere one way or another we have to find some kind of communication or some kind of uh, peaceful way <laughs> Aikido philosophy uh, but basically a peaceful way to, to discuss about it and even if our opinions are different to find a way where we can work together. So this new series of Rediscovering Aikido is somewhat about that. And the very last aspect that I just feel like I have to put in here is also one of my main parts of my personal philosophy is that life or my life is a lot about bringing unique value, as much value as I can to the world, but also as unique as it can be and the more valuable it is. And given my background and my journey, it's natural that you know, I can, I can have these conversations uh, and bring some things to the table. Uh, nonetheless, you know, this journey, this story is not about me. Uh, and uh, it's always best to go to the best to seek for answers. And that's why I'm always so inspired to talk to various experts. And in this case, uh, I will be talking to Christopher Hine. Uh, interesting story is that uh, Christopher Hine has a similar journey to mine, similar martial arts journey. He also was a devoted Aikido in, in, uh, student, instructor, and then for a, for a while he pushed that away. He trained mixed martial arts and became an MMA coach. 
and eventually he started to look back at Aikido as well. So he kind of went through the path which uh, I went through and already he went through stages which I am currently examining. So it's always great to look at those people who, you know, climbed the mountain ahead of you and they can tell you, oh, look, there's this and that. So this is one of those amazing chances and talks. And the way I learned about Chris, it was, it was interesting because it, for the past couple of months, ever since I brought up the rediscovering Aikido subject to the table on, online on my channel, numerous people kept uh, writing me a comment like, oh, do you know Christopher Hine? And another person like, oh, do you know Christopher Hine? And, and those were, from as far as I know, I'm connected people to each other. And just like in periods of a few weeks, like there would be another and another person who would just ask me that. And uh, usually I take that as a sign that I should, there's something there, you know, there wouldn't be, there, there's a reason why people are recommending it. And so I just have to take a look at it. And I looked at Chris's stuff and I liked it. And I realized I had a feeling like, okay, we're gonna have something interesting to talk to. And I was not disappointed at all. Uh, not only that the whole talk is great, but also I was very impressed by how Christopher has really a well-developed perspective and kind of clarified intention of what's Aikido. And also he, he gave a brilliant answer uh, quite d different from anything that I heard before. There's some similarities, but but it was a, fa a fairly unique answer that I heard when I asked the question, what is the unique part of Aikido in the world? Like, what can Aikido give that nothing else can? And I loved his answer. So, so you know, stay tuned for, for the whole of it. Uh, but th just everything he said, it's, it's, it's evident that he put so much thought and intention into it he knows this stuff, you know, he knows, he, he knows both worlds, martial arts, I mean, Aikido, combat sports, and um, yeah, his, his mind is really working in a, in a very well-defined way. And uh, there's another aspect that I love that I don't want to spoil too much, spoiler alert, I guess, uh, but he spoke about the idea, the concept that Aikido is actually in its infancy stage especially with the only more or less the third generation, you know, working things through and, and that as much as it makes just pure sense, I, I realized I never thought about it that way because Aikido kind of establishes, it's funny to say Aikido does, you know, Aikido is, is a concept, but in the Aikido world, I feel there, there's more of a sense like, okay, it's, it's already this thing. But when you take a look and take the perspective of what if, it's actually just very well, very much about still being dis, dis, to be discovered. What if Aikido is still in a stage where it needs a lot of work to really make it adaptable to the current world and relevant? So I don't want to make this whole talk about the intro, so I will let you to listen to the whole talk uh, from here on. But those are a couple points that really stuck out to me and trust me there will be even more great points and even these whatever I said will be elaborated and expanded upon so stay tuned enjoy and I'll be looking forward to see what you have to say about the talk in the comments so I'll make it official and say thank you again for finding the time to talk right on. To me. thanks for interviewing me there's an interesting moment for me that um, a number of people uh, since I started a new channel which this video is gonna go on uh, where part of the subject is rediscovering Aikido, me looking mm -hmm. back at Aikido and trying to salvage and see what good things happened mm -hmm. from me learning it. Uh, there's a number of people who directly recommended uh, to check your material out because I saw Ooh, you have to tell them so. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there's like, there's, and I was like, I, I got interested from the very first comment, but I have this kind of per se a rule in my mind that if a few people say the same thing, connected to each other usually that means there's something to it and so that was you know the case with you so i'm really looking forward to figure out what it's all about awesome sounds great so the first question uh or topic i wanted to bring up is pretty much your journey uh, i i was told it's quite similar to my story uh, I guess there's some some similarities, but I'm sure there's also a lot of different things. So, sure. so I'm just super interested. So what's how would you describe your journey? Where, where does it start? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try not to ramble on too long because a lot of these Aikido things tend to go with the teacher talking forever about their legacy of how they became <laughs> who they are. Um, but, yeah. you know, just some 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 overviews of what's going on. Like, um, so 
I, uh, like a lot of people, um, I was a kid. I thought martial arts were super cool. I wanted to learn them. Um, and of course, like everyone, I wanted to learn the best one, whatever the best one was. That's the one I wanted to learn the most, you know? And, and I, I looked at a bunch of different ones and studied with different teachers and I did some Kung Fu and some Nijitsu and different stuff, you know? Um, and then, uh, I came across Aikido, um, and I came across Aikido in an odd way. Actually, I was talking with a, a totally unrelated thing. And this guy had told me this awesome story about how this Aikido teacher would blindfold himself and his students would try and hit him with sticks and he would get out of the way. And this sounded awesome. Yeah. You know, I was like, well, that's powerful stuff. Can I ask quickly how old were you or what year that was? So this is probably, I mean, I think I just started high school. So I was probably like mm -hmm. 13, something, 14, you know, whatever age that you are in high school. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so I don't know what year that was. The 90s. I'm curious though. Was uh, not a big thing here, but is is where Seagal, Steven Seagal, at the top of his prime at the moment? Because I know a lot of people were influenced influenced by him in there. So yeah, that was starting to come along, you know. And so I didn't really follow that Steven Seagal route myself. Yeah. Although a lot of the people that I trained with early on, that was what drove them to Aikido. Right. Um, and to me, the stories is what drove me to Aikido more. Okay. And and I read Aikido Dynamic Sphere, and that really made Aikido seem magical and amazing. And that's right. why I wanted to study it, you know. Yeah. Um, so there, luckily for me, there was a school here in town, um, and it had a really reputable Aikido teacher. He had been to Japan and done all this yeah. stuff. Um, and so I, I joined the dojo and then really took to it. You know, I really liked it and, and did a bunch of Aikido and becoming Uchi Deshi. So I was a live-in student, um, for about a year and I did it two different times. Um, and, uh, got my shirt on, uh, and all that stuff and was really into it and was great. And, you know, when I was a kid, I, I had kind of a hard upbringing uh, and I got in a lot of fights. So mm -hmm. fighting's wasn't weird to me at all. Um, mm. However, I got in a fight after I was showed on and uh, uh, the fight was whatever it was. But what shocked me was I didn't do Aikido, right? So yeah. like, look, I've been training all this time in Aikido. Why, why was there no Aikido? It was weird, right? right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that made me think like, oh, you know, I need to start looking Great. at other stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, in different stuff. So, you know, like, and this is like, you know, probably 19... Or no, it's probably 2000, 2001 about now, about right. that time. And um, so there wasn't like, you know, UFC was around, but it wasn't a big deal. No one really yeah. cared. You know, it wasn't a super huge deal. Um, there was a local school that did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. There was a local boxing gym. There were some hardcore, like 1970s karate guys, you know, like they really were into it. Um, so I went and visited all those different places. And my, my thought was originally what I thought was, okay, look, I've been doing Aikido, but in this like kind of peaceful form based way. And so like, if I go train with these dudes, then they're going to really try and hit me and I'm going to do Aikido. You know, like I figured I would just learn to do Aikido. That's what yeah, I would do. Yeah, yeah. So that went on for a while and it wasn't working. And then I, uh, through doing a bunch of research, I found Tim Cartmel, um, who's a, a Chinese internal martial artist. He's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Um, he's into competing and into doing MMA. Um, and so, uh, I looked at his school and his school looked like what I wanted. Right. So I saw him doing traditional stuff, which I was like, okay, I'm, I'm very familiar with that world and his school doing tons of sparring and boxing and grappling and stuff. And so I was like, what, here's the perfect school where we'll marry those worlds that I want to marry. And under the guidance of someone like this, who's probably been through a very similar path that I've been through, he'll show me how to marry these two, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I moved to Southern California and I started training and all that. And I was training in Xing Yi, um, his hybridized style, which is called Shin Wu, um, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu mm. and submission mm. wrestling and some different stuff. And, um, and I, I discovered probably in the first like six months that there was no need to worry about Aikido because all this other stuff I was learning worked better. It just worked better, you know? And yeah. so, um, I wasn't pulling off Aikido stuff, but I was learning to, uh, pass someone's guard really well, which was highly effective. I was learning to strike on the ground, which was highly effective. I was learning to box, which was highly effective, right? So I was learning all the skill sets that were really, really good um, for doing that. And so it was like, why did I waste all this time studying Aikido? And I yeah. said to Tim, I was like, I wasted a bunch of time. And it's funny, you know, he's got, he's got a really good view of the world. And he said, you didn't waste that time. You learned to use your body and you learned a lot of good stuff and there's stuff you got from it. It's just, yeah. you didn't learn how to fight and that's okay. You know? Right. And, and I was upset, you know? So if you look at early records of me on the internet, they're basically me going around to websites saying like, Aikido people don't know what you're talking about, right? You, you sure. guys are dumb. Yeah. Like it's not working. And, and at that time there was no reception to that. Every Aikido person was just like, you're dumb. You don't know if Aikido, if you knew more Aikido, then you would be better at this and it would work out for you, you know, but that wasn't what was, you know, I knew for a fact because I went and did it and I would tell people, I was like, well, go wrestle people and see how it turns out for you. And everyone's like, oh, we know how it will turn out. We're, we're great at Aikido, you know? So 
that went on for a long time and, and kind of my thought at that point, and I knew I was going to be a, a martial arts teacher already. And so I thought I'll teach MMA is probably what I'll teach because I like that. Um, and a friend of mine suggested that I go fight with the dog brothers. Um, the dog brothers are a full contact stick fighting group. So uh, I didn't want to do it because um, I figured I was going to get beat up, right? Because I did sure. all this uh, Aikido and the unarmed stuff, the Taijutsu I learned in Aikido was useless um, in MMA. So why would I assume mm. the stick stuff would work, you know? Mm. Um, but through a, a series of events, I ended up at this tournament uh, and I was fighting. Or it's not a tournament, it's like a meeting. And um, I did really well, like shockingly well. And with the guy who was there was a full-fledged dog brother, really good stick fighter. And I did very, very well. And it made me go, oh, Aikido does work at some stuff, you know? Sure. And um, maybe kind of like you've said, you know, you're, you're revisiting Aikido now. That's kind of where my head went, which is like, yeah. how can I revisit? Because maybe there's some good stuff in there I missed, you know? And I want to, sure. if there's good stuff, I want to get it out, you know, because I spent a lot of time doing it. Yeah. So um, I, I, I couldn't keep training MMA. I, I just my heart wasn't in it in the same way because I saw that Aikido could do something and it made me start thinking in different ways. And I was like, maybe this is not what I need to be doing now, you know? So I moved back home. Um, I got, I, first I started teaching in the park. I was teaching Aikido in the park and it was this, no one would really recognize it as Aikido because it was this rough and tumble, ridiculous thing. Um, that eventually led to me getting a house and, and uh, we trained in the garage and I built a garage dojo. Um, where we literally just beat each other against the walls all the time. That's what we did, you know? And it's, it was my process of trying to figure out what is Aikido, what is not Aikido, what's Aikido good for, what are other things good for, what is all that, you know? And so um, through that process, I kind of discovered a few important things. Um, one, that Aikido techniques are based around weapon stuff, right? Which should have been a no-brainer because one of the cliches you hear about Aikido is Aikido comes yeah. from sword work, right? Yeah. Ueshiba was obsessed with weapons. I mean, most of the videos of him are him moving around with a stick or swinging a bokken or something. He really likes that stuff. So clearly that was important. And that also made wrist grabbing make sense to me. It made showman and yokoman make sense to me because like if I'm swinging a stick or swinging a club or swinging a sword, those are the kinds of strikes I would have. So all that stuff started to make sense. And, and so I started to tie it together that it's like Aikido has something to do with weapons. Then, um, as I started, you know, in these garage days where we're, we're really getting each other all the time, I'm trying to do multiple attacker stuff and it's impossible because I can't shoot a double leg on one guy and then deal with the next guy who's on my back, you know? Sure. Um, and I can't like get into a clinch, set up a guy for a throw and not be getting beat by the other guy behind me. So, so I realized that Aikido can't be about like this little one engagement here, one engagement here, because you can't move fast enough from this guy to this guy to this guy. Right. So I started to realize there must be something else involved in that. And then that led me to understanding that Aikido is not, which and this should, should not be surprising. Aikido is not about fighting. Right. Um, okay. And I started to see that like if, if and, and I, if we change the word fighting to struggle, Aikido is, I don't want to struggle with people. You can't struggle with three people attacking you. It's impossible. What can I do? Well, I can learn the original lessons of Aikido. I can have my eye, I can keep good distance from them. And if they can't get to me physically, then they probably can't hurt me. Um, I can make good blends so I can move cleverly off the way to keep them from getting a hold of me. If they do get a hold of me, I can try mostly to escape. And there's other stuff in Aikido, but I think the, the main emphasis of Aikido is we look at Aikido wrong, right? So like my Aikido, I don't think is really different from a lot of other people's. It's just my focus is not on what we call kumiuchi, the struggle methods, right? And so that's like pins or the kyowaza ikkyo through rokyo or the nagewaza or um, uh, any of this other stuff that's about fighting someone, that's not what it's about. Now it's in the system because sometimes we can't avoid that struggle, but we want to struggle as little as possible. And in truth, we want to make an accord, you know? And so, um, that's what kind of started to change my, my thought process. And in this meantime, uh, uh, Aikido Fresno, the school that I currently have became available. So I took it over that further changed my ideas because it went from me throwing other dudes uh, at my age who are athletic around in, in against the walls to now I've got to deal with some 80 year olds and now I have some little kids and now I have people that are not going to get slammed against the walls, you know? So, so I had to change my way of thinking about it and, and change my approach to what do people want out of martial arts? Not what do I want out of martial arts, but what do people as a whole want out of martial arts? And then once I started to change my perspective of what does everyone else want? And what are they looking for? Then it's like, Oh, I see. I see where this meeting of the two is, as opposed to me going like, I want to be the toughest guy. You know, my journey started with Chris wants to be the toughest, awesomest guy that you could never beat up. Right. And then that became like, no, what am I studying to help the rest of the world? You know, that's kind of the, the idea, uh, the change in me anyways. I guess you, you kind of answered a, a number of questions I wanted to ask, but I think there's just so much more in them. So let's see, let's, let's see, let's go with this one. So 
if you would have to define what is the place of Aikido uh, in the world, and I'll just expand it a little bit, that's, that's a question that does come up quite a bit, especially in the discussion about Aikido. Uh, and there are some arguments and counter arguments, and some of them are, if somebody is like, do Aikido because it's like moving meditation, but you know, then some other people would say, do yoga or do contact improv or other type of dancing. Um, if in terms of martial arts efficient, efficientness, uh, it's not very efficient. I think we're on the same page here, or at least not the way it's trained in most places. Right. Yes, yes, I agree. Right. So, uh, so there's that difficult question of so, so what? And this is not to say that I'm, you know, I'm invested and I have, I'm, I'm saying like it doesn't have a place in the world, but it's something I want, I enjoy always exploring. So let's say if somebody asks you, so why does Aikido deserve to be, or what's its place, unique value in the world? What, what would you, be your answer? There's a ton of answers to that. You know, um, so my personal answer, like what I think uh, Aikido is doing, is Aikido is teaching people a way to protect yourself that is not about beating up anyone else, right? So it's not the goal. It's just how do I protect myself when confrontation goes awry? And ideally through that process, I will learn to keep confrontation from, from getting worse, right? And so what I mean by that is, you know, confrontations anytime you and someone else has a problem and both of your problems can't be resolved mutually easily, right? So, you know, like uh, you hate my sweater and I don't want to take my sweater off we now are in conflict, right? And so you could berate me and go, that sweater's stupid because of this and this and this. And I can tell you why my sweater's beautiful and I like it, right? So we're in confrontation. And what ideally Aikido wants to do is find a good result for that, right? And I would like to do it verbally, right? And so Aikido doesn't do a ton of training in this because that's not its main focus. But through the training, I kind of learned this way to like understand where you're coming from, right? Get a, an idea of you, right? So the idea of um, masubi to, to, to tie your energy and my energy together. And that sounds like hippie stuff, you know, but, but in truth, like what it's about is you have an intent, you have an idea, you have a way you see the world. I have an intent, I have an idea, I have a way I see the world. Is there a way that both of those can come together that's good and beneficial for you and me both, right? And then Aikido teaches a system that falls down from there, right? So, so you can't be reasoned with, so you come to attack me. And so I try to keep distance, right? You're like, I'm on a plane right now, Chris. I'm flying over there. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to be here when you get here. I want to keep distance between us, you know? And, but then you get here and you find out where I am and start to get close to me. And like, when you try to attack me, I try to suppress your attack, right? So I try to, in some way, keep your attack from harming me. And I try to remove myself from the line of your attack, right? And so that's, that's basically what I believe the idea of Ikkyo is and what I believe the idea of Tainohinko is, right? So I'm trying to do that. And then if it can't be resolved any other way, I will do the most limited amount of struggle I can to get out of there. That's what I want to do is to escape the situation. Now, if it got deeper than that, right, it was impossible for me to escape the situation. I believe Aikido is done as a system at that point. That's when you need to know jujitsu or you need to know mm. other things, right? Mm. But so Aikido, that's where Aikido spectrum lies. It lies everywhere from your intent and mind differ all the way down to you actually got a hold of me. And then at that point, it's like Aikido's not training that anymore. And it's the same as if I went to a boxing gym and uh, I said to the boxing coach, hey, teach me how to do headlocks. He sure. would say, I don't teach that. I'm a boxing instructor, right? And so that's what I think Aikido instructors should say when people come and say, teach me jujitsu. It's like, well, I don't teach jujitsu. I teach Aikido, right? Which is not, sure. not the same kind of thing, you know? Mm. That was a long way to get to the answer to that. But. No, actually, no, that, that was the perfect amount. Um, so what, what you're saying that absolutely makes sense. And those principles sound like legit and uh, appropriate, especially like for, for both self-defense and kind of the mentality. Uh, one thing that comes to my mind is when I was exploring what is self-defense, I came to a conclusion that what I like to say is self-defense is 90% uh, prevention. You know, yes. uh, people are yes. too much about what happens when you're grabbed versus how did we All get the there? stuff that happened before that's exactly right. right so so what you're saying really makes sense now i'm curious though to ask uh so when you're teaching a like an aikido class mm -hmm. so how how similar does your curriculum look to a regular it's uh, i understand it's a troublesome thing to say regular aikido right. class because there's so many styles in schools but there right, are right, certain right, right. tendencies like what we could say like our general aikido so if, if it's possible to compare what changes did you make in the methodology how you teach and train those principles in, in an IT so, class? 
I got gotcha. you. Um, so the beginning of the Aikido training at my school is, is very similar to where it would be anywhere else. Uh, ninth Q is where we start students. And the focus of ninth Q is Tai Sabaki, right? So, um, and that's Koki Ryoku, how do I make force? Ashi Sabaki, how do I move myself around? And Ukimi, how do I receive force, right? So those are the fundamental things. And, and I kind of look at that as like um, getting us all on the same athletic page, right? So can we all use our bodies in roughly the same way? Because until we can, we really can't train together much. So the focus of someone new coming into my school is the same as it would be in a lot of schools, which is how do you use your body? Okay. Mm -hmm. The second part, when we get into eighth Q, we start immediately beginning with the strategy of Aikido as we, as I teach it, right? So my approach to Aikido. And it, to me, that's something that's really lacking in a lot of Aikido schools is because, you know, you say like, how is Aikido going to help me? People say, oh, well, if people try and fight you, they won't be able to. Oh, well, well, how won't they be able to? Oh, well, we know these sweet wrist twists. Oh, well, how do wrist twists stop people from attacking me? Oh, well, it hurts real bad. You know, like it's this weird contrived like set of things. And instead, you know, at, at my school, like it all starts with, are you aware of what's going on, right? And so that to us is kokyu. Kokyu means the idea of being calm and ready. Am I calm and ready to receive the world, right? How can I get myself in a mental mindset that is calm and ready to receive the world? Because if I'm freaked out, then I can't pay attention to what's going on. So the first stage is to be able to do that. And this is what I expect my eighth cues to be able to say, right? Is to be able to, to understand this. So that's the first stage. Second stage, someone wants to attack me. Can I keep distance from them? What is the minimum distance I want them to be to me, right? So at what distance does it actually become scary? And at what distance is very unlikely that they're going to launch an attack, okay? If that distance breaks down, how do I keep them from attacking me in that close space, right? Which is basically the idea of ikkyo. And, you know, uh, we use the word ikkyo much more liberally than I think a lot of Aikido schools. We don't use ikkyo to just mean grabbing someone by the elbow and pushing them down. We mean controlling the arm at the elbow so they, it's hard for them to grab me or get a hold of me or use a weapon on me or whatever. Then from that ikkyo, how do I change the line? And that's taino hinko. How do I position myself in a way that it's real hard for them to hurt me, right? So this is the strategic order we use at my school. And at eighth Q, I, I expect people to be able to say this order, right? And I don't think it's sunk in very deep at this point, but they start to get the idea, right? And this is really good for when you're teaching kids, for example, right? So if you think you're going to teach an eight-year-old how to do kodagaish, and then if someone tries to hurt that eight-year-old, they're going to kodagaish him, you're a fool. It's never, ever going to happen, right? However, it is possible for that kid to learn to pay attention when they're nervous. Oh, stuff's going on. I need to look at what's going on around me. Hey, there's a scary adult. Can I keep myself away from him, either by putting obstacles in between us or by keeping a physical distance between the two of us, right? Um, if he were to try and get me, I don't want to grab him and go to him. What I want to do is get to a good position and escape this guy, right? So that's the methodology we're using. The Aikido, the way I teach it is the, the idea is always that we're on the weak end, right? So there's either more of them, they're armed, they're stronger, they're better trained than us. Mm -hmm. These are the things we're dealing with. So to confront directly that kind of person is foolish. You will die, you will lose. So how do I not correct, uh, directly confront them, right? That's the idea. Um, and then we don't get to, see, I believe the, the most Aikido schools really work a lot on forms training in one way or another. We don't get to forms training seriously until you're a fourth cue, right? So it's, it's very far down the line for us. And then my expectations of that is that you start to learn the traditional forms so you can pass those along and you understand where those would actually come into play as opposed to thinking that kodagai or niki or something is what you're going to do when someone attacks you. That's a bad way to think of it. However, understanding the process that would lead you to having to do a niki and why a niki would actually be useful, right? Niki is good for disarming. It's good for getting someone to let go of me. It's good to quickly move someone away from me, right? So things like that are good, but it's not something I'm going to dominate with. You know, it's not a, not a mm -hmm. awesome, powerful, I'm the toughest guy kind of thing, you know? And I think that's where Aikido really rubs people raw. And, and you know, I believe that my, my interpretation is historically pretty correct. Now, it's arguable. Um, but nonetheless, it's my interpretation. And I believe that's historically where we went wrong is we got a bunch of young people saying, I'm going to be the toughest guy and Aikido must be that because that's what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, uh, maybe it's from an old guy who is trying to tell us how to not have bombs dropped on our country and, and hate towards other people, right? And when you read what he has to say, those are more the kinds of things he has to say than become the toughest guy, you know, become real strong. Like he's not someone like Masoyama or something who's saying like, go punch a rock all day and get hard hands, right? He's saying a different kind of thing. And this is where I believe we get a skewed. And so the focus in my school is on that stuff, right? What I would call Aiki, which is the ability to make harmonious interaction with someone else. How do I fit with someone else or they fit with me? How do we make that happen? 
Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. And I'm obviously digesting everything as you're saying and reflecting. And I do remember there is a point which I think it's quite often made that uh, the people that were drawn to Mori Yoshiba that day, uh, his core students were uh, young guys who were already training mostly in other martial arts. They re revered him as the master, so they wanted to learn from the best to be the best, kind of, as you said, the toughest guy. And also it was a time when, in the way I perceive it, it was a time when Jap Japan lost the second world war and the guys wanted to kind of bring back that uh, that pride of japan like there's so many things which fell into place where uh, i i don't know if you heard this story uh, i heard uh, bob nadeau telling this one uh that when he was studying with morhi Yoshiba, uh he would go on rants long long rants sometimes just well rants maybe well long right. lectures instead of doing the right, class right, just right, about right. sharing his philosophy and apparently there was a moment where two senior students were standing at the door and they saw someone coming into the dojo and they showed them like don't come you know the the, the old guy is is ranting and and that story struck me because i presume it's true and kind of makes sense uh, and also I read like the Remembering or Sensei. I, I really like that book, especially back in the day. A lot of stories where people who were in close contact with Mori Yashiba, uh, they mentioned stories where he would reflect and say to them that actually I feel like no one is getting me. Or uh, there's one quote where he said, I see people following me, but no one, when I look back, no one is really behind me and stuff like that. So, so did you get that vibe as well as you as you were exploring, like, you know? So I, I really think, and in, 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 uh, actually my original tip to this probably comes from Bob Nadeau too, um, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, him kind of saying that like, you know, this guy was saying a bunch of esoteric weird things that it was very hard for people to understand what he was saying. And especially, you know, you get a bunch of like high school or, and guys in their twenties who are like, you know, into fighting and they got this guy talking about in and yo and, and the balancing of the harmonies right. and how the truth of the universe is already complete and, and victory is instantaneous because it already is, you know, and, and all this stuff, like it's really hard for them to understand what he's saying. And so to me, I think most of them just looked at what he could do. And then from that said, okay, I want to be powerful like him. So I'll do whatever he does. Although the stuff he's saying is kind of not that important. And, and I think in lots of ways, it's the opposite. And I think Yoshiba said as much that it's like the stuff I'm doing really isn't that important, but the yeah. spirit in which I'm doing it and the way in which I make my practice is what's important. And I think that there, there's real truth to that. And it, it's hard because that's not concrete, right? It's not something we can really sink our teeth into, but Shomenuchi Ikkyo Motewaza is something we can set our teeth sure. into, right? So it's like, I know what that is and I can practice that. The problem is that form is not the essence of what Aikido is. It's just a little piece of Aikido, you know? Right. It's like you know, pulling a spark plug out of your car and saying, this is the car. And it's like, no, that's just a piece of your car. I mean, it's an important piece. Your car won't work right without it, but it's just a piece of your car. Hmm. So when we look at Aikido, the way you, you, you teach it, who would you say is an ideal client per se? Like that's a, that's a term that I like to use, like ideal client or who is the perfect person for that type of Aikido? Could you, dis how would you describe that person? So I think there are two people who would really benefit from the kind of, of teaching that I do. Um, and they're on two extreme ends of the spectrum. Um, one person is a regular person who maybe they saw some violence or uh, someone gave them some shit and they're feeling scared inside. And so uh, the kind of person who look, they're not going to devote their life to martial arts training, but at the same time, they want to feel a little better inside. And they're like, what steps could I take? What are the basic steps I could take to protect myself if someone were to hurt me? So that kind of person is, is really great. Um, uh, and then the other end of the spectrum is a person who has done a lot of fighting and is really well trained and they realize that they can't always be the toughest person because look, it doesn't matter how much training you get, right? So, you know, let's say you're the UFC champ of the world, right? And then the, the second best and third best guy decide to team up and beat you. All your physicality is useless now because second and third are still going to beat first when they unify together and try to attack you, you know, yeah. or you could say, okay, take that UFC guy and drop him in the middle of a battlefield. How well is he going to do? You know, there's a whole nother kind of training that guy had to get and he doesn't have that training. So even though he's a tough guy in one context, drop him into another situation. He's not a tough guy anymore. Right. Um, so it doesn't matter how uh, tough you become. You always have weakness. And so what I believe Aikido does 
is find ways to work with that weakness. So instead of learn to overcome the weakness, right? Which is the way of a lot of training, you know, oh, so you're physically weak, let's lift weights or you're, 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 we're gonna hit rocks all day or we're gonna twist on each other or we're gonna grapple and build mental fortitude or whatever stuff, right? That's cool, but there are certain things you can't ever get away from. So yeah, just, you know, you asked me um, essentially what, what kind of people would benefit from the, the way that I perceive Aikido. And I think either A, the regular person who's not gonna try to become Billy Badass, they just wanna know what they should do if someone attacks them, right? right. What, what are the basic steps you should take? And then the other side of that is someone who is very comfortable and very tough, yet they realize that the truth of the world is they can never prepare for every situation. So there will be situations where they're not the best, the greatest, right? And, and on that side of it, Aikido is a system that helps you learn to deal with those kinds of situations, right? And not by dominating, by having a totally different mental mindset towards the situation. Mm. So one more thing I wanted to ask uh, and reflect about together with you. Um, when I look at Aikido globally as a practice and I consider what are the challenges it's facing, one of the challenges I'm personally recognizing is that Aikido promises a number of things, uh, including like, it depends on the school and the teacher, but generally there a sen there's a sense of meditation, conflict resolution, um maybe some some type of philosophy and one of the ideas i came up recently with is that you have to be good at what you want to teach so this is where i feel personally i feel like you know sometimes struggles because some schools do feel like they are presenting aikido as a means of self-defense but the instructor rarely has a background in any self-defense discipline same can be said about meditation or philosophy. You definitely seem like you went out of Aikido to develop the skill set you, you preferably need to introduce all those subjects. So, so it seems like you, you are familiar with that journey. So how does that all thing sound to you? Do you agree with that idea that extra training needs to be there to teach Aikido the way it's supposed to be? And did, did you have to go through that process specifically yourself? So it really depends on what you want to do, right? So I think there are a ton of people right now practicing Aikido. That Aikido for them is when they go to the dojo and they train Aikido and then they get whatever they get from it and then they go home. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? Perfectly great. I, I do a martial art and it's Aikido and I go do it, you know, two days a week and this is, this is what I do. And that's no different than someone who, you know, like I'm a, a hobbyist gym collector and I, I like to go out in the woods and look for gyms and then sometimes I polish them up and make a ring out of them, right? Now that person's not a jeweler right? That person is a rock collector who hobbyist does that. And same thing with Aikido or any martial art. Now, if you want to be a martial arts instructor, your job to me is to get a big idea of the field, right? So you have to train in a lot of different things to understand, you know, what, where your martial arts sits on the paradigm. So there's the first part of it, which is mastering your own art, right? How do I do my own art? Do I know what my own art consists of? And then there is what is everything around the art? So I actually know where the art sits in the world, because without that, you have no context for understanding where your system ends and where your system begins. And you also have a tendency to make the art personal in the sense that you think that, well, because I want to learn to fight, then Aikido is about fighting. Because I want mm. to learn to meditate, Aikido is about meditating. Because I want to learn whatever, horseback riding, Aikido is about horseback riding, right? And you see that kind of stuff a lot in Aikido where a teacher is interested in something else and they're like, oh, this is Aiki rock polishing, or mm. this is Aiki mm -hmm. dance, or this is Aiki whatever, right? So, so, and that's because they're trying to put the context of their martial art in with the rest of the world, which is what you should do. But in order to do that as a martial arts instructor, you have to understand other martial arts, right? So, I mean, the list of things I've done is huge since after I was already a black belt in Aikido because I wouldn't understand certain aspects. And so it's like, oh, I want to learn sword fighting. So I understand what that really is. And so I go do historical European martial arts so I can understand more about sword fighting, right? Or I want to learn uh, what is grappling really. So I go do Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know? You have to understand these things. And that doesn't mean you put them in Aikido. Aikido is already fine all by itself. You don't hybridize Aikido, but you need that understanding as a person. So when you talk to your students, you could say, oh, that's not Aikido, or this is Aikido. And here's why I believe that's not Aikido, or this is Aikido, right? So you need to, as a teacher, complete your personal studies so you can come back and teach Aikido well. Yeah, yeah it does make sense. And I, I like that thought of line. And it makes me think about 
uh, ac academic studies and to make it uh, official and record I, I did not study so it's just what I I personally gathered but when I think about even my friends let's say a friend of mine who's a doctor now after like I don't know 12 years of studying uh, he had to study everything like and and from what I gather it was not only just medicine it was like so many things around that and even in medicine, there was the general medicine, and only maybe after seven years or so, he was starting to dig into a specific subject. And I think right. that that seems to be true in pretty much any studies. They're, they're yes. not just teaching one very particular field, but they're teaching you everything so that you would have that versatility and better understanding of the whole picture. So, so yeah, it makes sense to do that uh, with an Aikido as well. Um, one more thing to bring up, uh, and this came up before we went on record. Uh, we spoke about being hated in the Aikido community. Uh -huh. I, I, I mentioned that I, I went through that and I experienced that, and you said that it's a familiar thing to you too. So can you extend on that? Sure. Um, so, you know, after I had the, the meeting of the Pack of the Dog Brothers, and um, I had a realization that Aikido revolved around weapon-centric stuff, you know? Um, and to me, that was a huge realization because I had been trying it for years in Brazilian jiu-jitsu sparring and MMA situations, and it didn't work. And then all of a sudden, this Dog Brothers fight, all this, this stuff starts working. And it's like, this is miraculous, you know? So I, I told the Aikido community, and what I really expect is going to happen is they're going to go, oh, wow. That, that was, that's, we had never thought of it that way. And that's really smart. And instead what I got was, oh, you don't understand Aikido. And, and I was like, well, but wait, so let me explain my background. So I explained what I did and they're all, oh, yeah, 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 your Aikido just sucks is what it is. And so then I was like, oh, well, I'm going to make videos then and show you guys what we do. And if you do something more intense than this, let me know. So I have all these videos from back in the day of us slamming each other around. And I put that up and they're like, oh yeah, just proves our point. Your Aikido sucks. And so there was this long period of like just, you suck and everything you think sucks and that's just the way it is and it honestly was very good for me because mm. it forced me to look at what i was saying and make sure that i was right about something before i said it and i always would have the grain of i could be wrong and so if you're making a convincing argument i need to listen to it and i need to try and go that way because mm. If you can't have the openness, then, you know, it, it's the cliche. Your cup's already full. You can't put anything else in it, right? And I want to keep learning and growing. So if I have this closed down mind that I'm right and that's all there is to it. But I also learned in that how to stick to my guns and go like, I know what I, I mean, these truths are evident. And I will show you why I believe these truths. And if you have different proof, then I would love to look at it. But if you don't have different proof, then I don't know where else we can go from here, you know? So, so I faced a lot of that in the beginning where it was like, you know, you're stupid and everything you do is dumb. And it was good for me, actually. You know, and at the time, it didn't feel good. It was a lot of me being grumpy. But, um, but, but the truth is, it was good because it forced me to look at what was actually going on. How is it now? Because your, your Aikido, uh, the way you teach it, is not like the very regular traditional Aikido. Uh, do you get any negative comments, people saying that this is not Aikido or anything like that? Sure. I mean, I, I get lots of uh, comments from people who are... Uh, historians and pseudo historians who are like this is not a correct reading right and um that's problematic for many reasons you know and 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 mostly the way i try to address that now is that it's like this comes from me and i did all these things aikido being a big thing that i did and i had these realizations through training in aikido but this is my approach to aikido so i don't want to have a long historical debate which i think i would win anyways but i don't want to have that debate because it's not what matters what matters is you know what's the zeitgeist of aikido right now and how do we push that zeitgeist forward, right? Because that is what informs people as to whether they want to do Aikido or not. And to me, the Aikido zeitgeist is simply, um, I want to learn something that resolves conflict, ideally, without having to do a lot of fighting. You know, if you ask, you know, you just picked a regular person off the street who knew what Aikido was, you said, what's it about? Be like, oh, it's that art where you, you don't have a lot of fighting with people and you use energy against if someone attacks you and it's defensive only or stuff like that. It's the stuff you would hear. So it's like, that's what people think Aikido is. So that's what it is. Um, I also get a lot of, um, because now, you know, uh, my tip is I, I, I don't believe Aikido is about fighting. So a lot of times when I show stuff and I'm like, and here's where you could escape, people are like, Chris, what you should do is crush the enemy there, you know? And it's like, well, I, I don't think we should crush the enemy. And I honestly don't mm. think that's the way you deal with life, you know? The landlord doesn't come over and go, hey, I'm increasing your rent and I crush him in the hallway, you know? 
perfectly capable of crushing the landlord, but that would be stupid, right? I would then go to jail. I'd be a bad person. All kinds of problems come from that. So the way I deal with the world is not to shoot a double leg and mount and, and dominate, right? That's not the way I deal with the world. I deal with it by making accords all the time. I'm constantly making accords. And Aikido, I see as a martial art to help you figure out how to make accords. And so if it can do that, that's what I want, right? So I need more accords in my life. Now, that's not to say that the other side's not important. And I've spent a lot of time doing other martial arts so I can learn to do that if I need to. If I need to fight and struggle, I train to do that. And I still train to do that now, but it's not the focus of my training. And so I get a lot of haters who are like, oh, you don't know how powerful Nikyo really is. And it's like, oh, all right. I'm glad you like Nikyo. But, but I think it's about much more than that, you know. Mm. So those are the two most, you know, historical arguments a lot. People are like, you're wrong. And then people are like, you don't punish people enough. Mm. Well, you, you kind of brought up the, the point yourself of the, the mentality of Aikido applying to everyday life. And I'm curious to ask, how much uh, do you put emphasis of trying to make sure that that mentality is translated to your students and that that tr translates into their daily life? And another part to that question is uh, how, how much of it is done uh, by directly trying to explain it to them or, or some other way in, and versus just teaching what you teach and knowing that those principles will get translated naturally. So, so how do you work through that applied Aikido philosophy? So um, a big part of that I feel is um, after class conversation. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm available after class to talk about things. And so we usually we have talks uh, often about Aikido, but a lot of times not about Aikido as well. You know, like someone will bring up some situation that they had in life and we just talk about it, you know, and, and sometimes we'll talk about how Aikido philosophy applies to that directly. Like, oh, in Aikido, we learned this concept, you know, distancing, like, oh, your mom likes to leech all your time and talk to you ad nauseum about how she hates her new husband. Well, maybe you could distance a little bit, you know, like, so maybe we talk like that, but also just like kind of talking about like, thinking about the overall situation and, and how they play out. And what I believe is important about Aikido study is because it's a martial art, a lot of times, no matter what's said about it, when you go into studying it, you're like, oh, it's about decisively beating someone else. And then the way I teach Aikido is not about decisively beating someone else. And so I think that also indirectly has an effect on people, you know, where it's like, oh, there's another way to look at this situation. Like instead of running at that guy who's looking at me mean, can I keep space from him? Or can I smile and wave to him? Or how can I change the situation from being a direct conflict? You know, if you look at Yoshiba, people always say like, oh, you know, he was so powerful. A sumo wrestler couldn't push him over. And it's like, no, read the story. And it's like, they wanted them to do sumo. And Yoshiba twisted it around to something that he could do well at, right? So mm. he found a way that he could fit with the guy. Or like, you know, he gets in a fight with Abe Sensei on, on, uh, in a bus. And like, instead of getting in a fight with him, he said, can you break my pinky, right? Like, that's not a fight. But he twisted the situation into a way that was beneficial for him, right? And it ended up being beneficial for both of them. And so that kind of philosophy that is in everything we do, um, talking with the students after and trying to be as good of a representative of that as I can be, right? And so, you know, we all have our failings, but as much as I can, I try to exemplify those, those attitudes and, and not be a jerk and not directly attack people and like look at overall and give people the benefit of the doubt. That's what I'm hoping comes out overall, you know? So I do believe that Aikido training is mostly about the Aikido, which is how do I deal with a situation that's starting to get bad before it has gotten really bad? But then there's all the other life stuff that goes into that that's like myself trying to be a good person, being a good example for people, and like uh, giving praise to people who I see are being a good example. You know, if one of my mm -hmm. senior students is like, look at, you know, they did this nice thing and they were careful here and, oh, this guy attacked him, but he didn't do that, you know? So giving those kinds of cues all the time is, is part of how that comes out. Hmm. And when you look at the Aikido world yourself, uh, and maybe to give a, a few insights of my own, I, I, can, I consider personally that Aikido is more or less in a crisis, and that subject does come out. I don't know if things change or not. I haven't been in touch with it as much, but I remember like a couple of years ago, I think uh, in the Aikido Journal, uh, Josh Gold pushed that subject as well, and there's there's talks of Aikido memberships declining or becoming older and younger and losing that kind of mid-range uh, range of age. Uh, also, it does seem to have a bad reputation among other martial arts, especially combat sports. Uh, so those are my impressions. I don't know if you will agree with that or not, but, but just when you look at the Aikido world, the community it's, itself, what are your thoughts uh, when you think about Aikido in general? 
So I, I do believe, you know, I don't know if I'd say the word crisis or not. Like um, Aikido is not what it once was. And I think it feels like crisis to a big generation of teachers. And here's why. So you had Ueshiba. Then you had what I call the first generation of teachers, which is a really huge group. You know, it's, you know, mm -hmm. over whatever, 40 years. But all those people who were direct students of Ueshiba and they were teaching Aikido. And all those people, I feel like reading their stuff now, were trying to understand what Ueshiba was telling them. That was the big push of that generation. Like, let's understand what he was teaching and let's make organizations do that. And let's spread the word and let's really figure it out. Then you have the second generation of teachers who inherited the system, who I really feel like, took advantage of the situation because you had Steven Seagal coming along and making Aikido look cool. So all of a sudden there's a ton of public interest towards Aikido. Aikido is not sorted out yet. Uh, honestly, I believe it's not sorted out to this day. And so like, because of that, you had this generation that could really kind of milk Aikido. And I think that's what they did. And so I think they took a lot of advantage of what was available to them. And they said like, oh yes, we have figured out Aikido. It's this great, amazing martial art and could do all these wonderful things. And if you pay me this much and I will be a guru on a mountain. And, and I believe they had this real experience with Aikido that, that was cool for them personally, but not great for the art. And so mm -hmm. by the time we have the UFC appearing in the you know, mid nineties ish, then, uh, and, and Aikido is super popular, you're, you're seeing these questions risen that no one has answers for. Well, so how would Aikido do with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? No one in the Aikido community has thought about that. Very few people in the Aikido community are actual grapplers. Very few people have an idea of any kind of conflict outside of what happens in a dojo in this stage situation. So very few people can answer that. Now, the first generation of teachers after Yoshiba, they did go do with some of that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they did go to foreign countries where they were challenged by boxers and different things. And they did have to kind of make their way through the world and understand what that meant. But the second mm -hmm. generation had it really cushy. And so when the challenge came to that generation, they all just kind of collapsed. They didn't have a good answer for it. And so they pulled back more and they went into more movement stuff or more meditation stuff or more retreats or uh, how can we, I'm being a little cynical here, but how can we squeeze a little more money out of it and, and, you know, and go that route with it. Um, but that's what happened. And so now the generation I'm in and you're in, which I believe is the third generation of Aikido teachers, um, we're left holding the bag. And so now our job is like, well, what the hell do we do with this? Is, should I just leave? You know, like, I mean, you certainly had the feeling and I had the feeling that's like, maybe I should just jump ship because like this mm. isn't working. Like what's working? I'll go over there where it's working. But then it dug into me and it sounds like right now you're having the idea. Did it dig into you too? And it's like, it dug into me. And so it's like, is there something there that I actually really value that's not MMA or not Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? And what is that something? And is it real and valid? Because if it's not real and valid, I'm not going to do it. Right. But if it is real and valid, I want to check it out and I want to I want to live up to the potential that that has. Right. And so how can I do that? You know, and so I believe right now the crisis we're having is the third generation, a accepting the fact that you're not going to be a rich Aikido teacher. Right. So that went with our teachers. Our teachers got to be that. We don't get to be that. You're not going to be unchallenged. You're going to be challenged the whole entire time. Everyone's going to tell you you're stupid and dumb. And you don't know what you're talking about and you need mm -hmm. to prove what you're doing. And then we third have to figure out the system completely for ourselves. For myself, I need to tell you what my interpretation of Aikido is clearly so you can understand it and so we can practice this thing that I'm professing. And so that's what this generation has to do, right? The generation you and I are in. That's what we're figuring out and sussing out for everybody. And we have a lot of work because the second generation kind of sat on their laurels of Steven Seagal and amazing movies and new age mysticism and all the stuff that happened there, right? So that's how I feel. And that, that maybe sounds a little cynical and dark, but it's truly how I feel about it. And it's like, so... So me, it's now like, if you want to be an Aikido teacher right now, we'll step up. You got a lot of work to do, you know, like that's what's going on. So let's do it. Let's get this work done because I do care about Aikido. I do think it's offering something interesting and unique and different to the world. And I want to see that prosper. Mm. Yeah, I like a lot the way you describe it. And to be honest, I even didn't hear someone else breaking it down in that specific way. Uh, I, I, I can see the parallels of some of the common thought of lines, but but the way you structured it, it's it's uh, quite unique from what I hear, but but really sounds really true. So so I appreciate you bringing it up that way, and um, and also uh, the next question I'll want to ask may be a bit controversial. So you tell me if you'll okay. want to answer that or not. Uh, but so regarding Aikido again, when you look at it and the general way it's training, if I mean, it's I, I hate using that term, but it's the best yeah, I can come up yeah. with. Um, the, would, would you say, uh, that it's, do you see it like it's a good thing and 
those traditional dojos can continue training that way and everything is going to be fine? Or do you see that it's not really good and it has to change? And I'll just add a quick couple of thoughts of where I'm standing there. Uh, I, I see some good in it. I do like, I do try my best to be more positive about it these days, but some of the things I am upset about is kind of the um, delusions that is that it potentially creates. And I went through that myself, like even like the stories, the legendary stories of Moriyashi, but it makes you believe that, you know, there's these, all these supernatural things and, and, uh, and there's the hierarchy, which uh, can make you somewhat submissive. It depends on where, uh, which place you're training at, but I know cases where that happens and kind of it, it turns off the critical thinking at times because you're expected to just believe. So there's, there's quite a few dark things that I personally see. And I think it sprouts. I, I personally think it's a lot of it is systematic. I think it's, uh, it happens because of the delivery system. Uh, and so I'm not a huge fan of the way it's delivered. Uh, although of course there are some good things there too, but Having said all of that, uh, where would you say do you stand when, when you would have to, again, not a very fair question, but if you would have to say good or bad, where, yeah. where do the scales uh, go for you? Yeah, I understand. Um, so to me, if you can be completely honest, hmm. whatever you teach is fine, right? So, so meaning I think there's a lot of good stuff in the forms, like me tearing the, part of, the forms apart for myself is what showed me a lot of techniques that I didn't understand were there. And then in tearing them apart, I was like, oh, that's actually doing all of these things that I ignored that for a long time, right? So I believe you could get the, the formatic, you know, I believe Aikido generally, as you're saying, it's hard to, to come up with a word for this, but generally teaches Aikido through forms training, right? So we're gonna do all these forms. I believe the forms are an awesome old transmission method that can give you the system as, as a way to use it, right? If you wanna dig through it and get that out. So I don't believe there's anything wrong with that, but the teacher teacher teaching that needs to say, look, I know Aikido forms. I've done them with all these different people over all these years. And that's what I know is forms. I have never been in a fight in my life. Uh, I've never done any competitions. I've never, if that's where you're at, then just be honest about that. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it, it's like uh, going to a, a little league baseball coach and, and him telling you like, I'll teach you to be a pro. It's like, well, you've never been to the pros. You don't know yeah. what it's like. You don't, you know, so, so just no, stay in your lane. That's a, that's a colloquial saying, you know, but like stay in what you're good at doing. Right. So, so what you're good at doing, say that if you have done a bunch of other stuff, be fair and honest about that. Right. So I have grappled. I have yet not understood how grappling and Aikido come together. That's fair to say, right? I don't understand how that would play out. I've never had someone shoot at me with a gun. I've never had someone stab me with a knife, right? So be fair and be honest with, with your actual life experience and teach it on your terms instead of always reaching like, you know, like, oh, well, trust me, this system is deadly. Well, have you killed someone? Well, no, but uh, my teacher did once. It's like, well, but you don't know what it's like. So be fair and be honest about what's going on, you know? So mm -hmm. I believe that it can be transmitted in a million ways, but you have to be fair about what it is. And I would say that what we all have to do right now, and people really don't want to do this, is admit we're figuring it out, right? That's what this generation's doing. We're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And be honest with that. This is how I see it. I see it this way. And here's why I see it that way. And then look, if enough, of, if enough of us do it in this generation, we will kind of start to get a consensus of what how we feel about it. You know, this is my perspective and it kind of fits in with these guys' perspectives. And this is a group who trains Aikido in this way. And if you want to do Aikido, do it in this way, you know? So we just have to be honest. So I, I'm not down on anyone. You know, like I see like, you know, classic Aikikai stuff. It's like, that's cool. Is it, is it making life good for those people? Are those people enjoying doing it? Or are those people thinking they're becoming super soldiers because if you think you're becoming a super soldier that's a delusion quit quit that right now but if you think you're like wearing cool outfits and hanging out in a cool dojo with tatami and flipping people that's awesome and you're having a good time right like it would be like being an actor and thinking you really are a super sweet soldier you can you know kill in a battlefield it's like no you're an actor man that's what you do and that's cool and it's fun and it's awesome and we like actors right i would rather watch arnold schwarzenegger film than some real soldier talk about stuff a lot of times because it's more interesting he's arnold schwarzenegger he's good at that and so if you're good at flipping people around in a cool looking room cool there's nothing wrong with that but don't think that that makes you super awesome at fighting right it's different things and so just be fair stay in your lane stay stay inside of what you're good at or expand your horizons to do that thing you actually want to do hmm. what you just said inspired me to 
ask specifically one more question, and it's somewhat related to a story I do like to bring up sometimes. Uh, I think one of the final crises I had uh, in my personal journey as an Aikidoka, as a person who identified himself as, as an Aikido person, uh, I was still a professional Aikido instructor at the day, uh, and uh, I was having a conversation with a friend and who's a very good photographer, uh, and I asked him, what do you, who do you look up to, like in the photographer realm? And he told me like, oh, there's this guy and this guy and this guy. He just said, there's so many. And without me actually expecting him to ask the question back, he said, so who are you looking up to yourself in Aikido? And I was like, that kind of shocked me because I, I realized I don't have an answer. And I, and I mm -hmm. thought a lot about that. And I realized there, there are people I respect, like to see, <clears throat> I guess, you know, and then some maybe Japanese guys. Like I, there's, I respect them, but, but sure. even as an Aikidoka, there weren't anyone like, like if I, per se, if I train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or MMA, I'm like, there's these guys where I'm like, oh my God, you know, I, they're so good. And not to make them godlike, not to make right. them, you know, legendary, but there's like, I, I wish I, I, I look up to them and that pushes me forward. And I realized I didn't have any more of those aspects in Aikido after maybe, I don't know, 15 years of training. Uh, so that's kind of one part of the question. Uh, but the, the more important part is just you mentioned the, um, the generations, the third generation, uh, who's trying to figure it out. Uh, are, is there anyone you're looking, looking up to maybe is, is a big statement, but you, you, you respect in that kind of terms, like saying like, oh, I like what the way that guy is trying to figure out Aikido or this guy, or is there anyone you look up to in Aikido directly? What's your situation about that? Yeah, so um, uh, the first part of that question, uh, I believe that because of what I say the second generation of Aikido teachers did, um, I feel that we kind of have a shallow um, uh, breadth of study or something, right? And so right. when you talk about looking up to teachers, right? So uh, I had a friend who was a professional bicyclist and he went to a, a physical therapist to do some kind of thing. And he works, the physical therapist worked on all kinds of athletes. And um, he said, uh, the physical therapist said something to him you know, like, oh, oh, you're a professional bicyclist. And he said, yeah. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, it's kind of a, a shallow step, uh, study of field or something, something like that. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a small study. And, uh, and he was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, you know, football players are a lot better than, than um, uh, bicyclists. And he was like, how do you compare those? And he's like, well, because see, football players, there's a lot of people putting a lot of money and a lot of people studying. And so there's all kinds of people working on football all the time. So we know a lot about football and we know a lot about the injuries they have and training ways to keep them from uh, getting hurt. And we know a lot about them because so much effort's been spent into it. Bicycling isn't really that big a deal, you know? He's like, so not that many people actually work on it. Well, it seems like when you're in the field, it's a huge deal. Like in truth, you're not, you're not nearly as, as deep of a field of study as football is, right? Mm. And so that made me think that it's like there are, you know, different areas because humankind spent a lot of, of time in this area. We're better at that. So you can compare mm. essentially apples to oranges, two things that seem different, but it's like, no. Yeah. And so I believe Aikido is really shallow right now, right? Mm. And I believe the promise is really big. And yeah. so a part of the problem with who do I look up to is like, well, we're still just figuring it out. You know, like we're honestly just figuring it out. And, you know, some people are like, oh, it's been around so long. Well, it hasn't been around that long. You know, it's, it's really only been along since after World War II and it started spreading around here. So there's a lot to figure out. Now we have a cool, um, oh, I got to plug this thing in. But, uh, <laughs> hey, will you grab me in my charger? Um, sorry. But uh, yeah, no so, so we have this cool idea that, that we're working towards, but we haven't got there yet. And so, so it's hard to look up to people. Now, I do have lots of people who I look up to what they did, right? So, for example, um, um, for example, I really look up to like Saito Sensei. I think Saito Sensei did a great job of organizing Aikido as he saw it. That's cool. And that's what I respect him for. Um, you look at people like Shiota who really tried to push forward the idea of Aikido to the world, right? Or Kishimura Yoshiba, really push forward the idea of Aikido to the world. They did awesome things. And I, and I go like, man, that had to be hard. And that's awesome, you know? Um, but as far as the technical abilities of Aikido, we're still all growing right now, right? We're growing a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think that kind of answers both your questions, both in the big scope and the small scope. I think we don't have enough experience yet to really have long lasting icons. So you saying uh, 15 years of Aikido, I don't have anyone I really look up to anymore. It's because we're still pushing, you know, like 
give it, you know, and there's, there's no Isaac Newton's in Aikido. You know what I mean? There's no, you know, like famous people who've been around for a long time who really did something totally mind blowing. Right. Other than the founder, it's been like degrees of things. So, so I think we're still working towards that. So um, there's lots of people I look up to for little things. It's like, Oh, you did that well, or you made a good group there, or your students all seem cool. I get that a lot where I walk into an Aikido dojo and every guy in the dojo is cool. And I'm like, good job with your dojo. Everyone here's awesome. Right? Like yeah. these are good friendly people. And so like little victories like that, but I don't have anyone that I'm like, whoa, you're so amazing, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm not really good at that in general. I kind of generally in the world, I'm like, oh, we, we all screw up, you know, like, and we all do good stuff mm-hmm. too. So that's a great answer. Uh, speaking though of that kind of, let's say contemporary Aikido or pushing that, that edge of trying to adapt it and make it reasonable and effective for modern society. Is there anyone not necessarily looking up that you're looking up to, but, but that is in your mind where like, Oh, I like what that guy is doing. Or I like what that guy is doing, kind of pushing that, those boundaries. In, in Aikido you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to me, it's like, I really kind of feel like a lot of what I'm saying about Aikido is different than what other people are saying about Aikido. So, so like I said, you know, I, I, I am, uh, uh, I'm, optimistically excited about some stuff that Josh Gold's doing. I hope yeah. that he pushes Aikido Journal forward into the future. And I hope it doesn't just become a commercial venture, right? And so I'm optimistically hopeful about that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, there's a lot of guys doing cool little stuff. that's like, oh, that's awesome. Um, but honestly, there's a lot of people in Aikido right now, and I'm not going to talk about them, but there's a lot of people sure. in Aikido right now who I think are kind of doing the opposite. And they're, they're doing what, what the generation before us did, which is like mm. sensationalizing and trying to market Aikido. But it's like, ah, that shit's done. You know, like, we can't do that anymore. Aikido will just die because there's nothing to sell anymore, right? Like, let's talk about the truth and let's push Aikido forward from where we're at now instead of going like, oh, I've got this awesome thing. Why don't you guys come get it from me? Like, we're going to go sit into bed on a mountain. Like, all that's over in my opinion, you know? Um, so, so like, I am excited about anyone who's doing some grassroots stuff. There's, there's an awesome group of people going, like, um, uh, looking at uh, women's rights in Aikido and how women have kind of been squished down for a long time and not been appreciated by Aikido communities. I think that's awesome. That's some grassroots stuff. It's like, hey, we, we are valuable and useful people. And like, why have we not been given equal credit in these organizations? You know, there's sure. a lot of stuff. I, I, I think it's starting to happen in the Aikido communities. That's fantastic, right? Um, but it's like, we're not there yet. You know, we're still working you know it'd be right. like being at the very beginning of the civil rights movement and saying like you know like like uh, oh these are all my idols it's like no you're figuring out who your idols are right now you know so and i don't mean to compare aikido to the civil rights movement as a terrible comparison but but what i do mean is we're in our infancy and so we're still trying to figure it out nice um running towards my last questions and one of them is uh, you have a youtube channel uh-huh. and uh, i think there's many reasons why people can start a YouTube channel, but usually there is like a reason. And I'm curious, like what drove you to start a YouTube channel and what's on it? If you, we can also make this into a plug. (laughs) Sure. sure. Yeah. So I've had a YouTube channel since 2007. So we've been around for a long time. Um, Mm -hmm. And it really started out as, like I said, in the beginning of this interview as me going like, here's what we do at my school. What do you guys do at your school? You know, so people telling me, I don't know what I'm saying. And then it's like, well, this is how we train. Do you train like this? Do you know what training like this is like, you know? So that's where it began. And then over the years, like if you look at the channel, there's different times where I'm kind of hitting different stuff, right? So some stuff literally is just in my dojo, we were working on Sawari Waza and my students wanted to know how to practice those things at home. So I made videos that they could go to and look at me doing them at home, right? So there's some of that stuff. There's stuff where I feel like this is a good idea. I want to put it out in the world and see what kind of feedback I get. Sometimes I put it out and people go, that's stupid. And I'm like, okay, let me think about it. Is that stupid, right? Or people say, hey, that's great. And and we do this kind of thing. So getting feedback is another thing I use for that. Um, Most recently, and we have a a bunch of videos up right now, it's because uh, all the coronavirus stuff happened. And so it's like my students couldn't come into the dojo and I want them to have Aikido every day. So like for the first month, you know, it was every day I put up a video. So it's like, it's kind of like training. At least you're thinking about it and working on it and letting it process, you know? So that's what the most recent push was, you know? And now I'm kind of starting to feel like I have ideas that are worth hearing. And so now I'm starting also to try and put out the ideas that I think are worth hearing. Mm, Nice. So how do people find you online? Um, There's lots of ways. Uh, So I have a school website, aikidofresno.com. You can check that out. And that's just our school. If you're in the area or you want to stop by, everyone's welcome to come here and train. Um, we have a podcast, which is Aikido Discussed Podcast. You can find that on uh, whatever podcast venue yeah. you like to subscribe to. 
Um, we have, I have aikidostudent.com, which actually I just started revamping about a year ago. Um, it's got a lot of information about uh, stuff, articles I write and stuff like that about Aikido. Um, so those are probably the main ways um, that you can check us. I know the world is crazy these days, especially with COVID and the States is not there yet where traveling around is big, but, but do you also teach seminars? Like, uh, I, I, did, did your journey reach that stage where people are so in, interested to learn the way you work and invite you, or I'm sure that's going to happen sooner or later if it didn't, but, but is, is that somewhat around already? Yeah. I usually teach this year, I couldn't, but uh, I have been teaching for the last four years at a, a big thing in Vegas called Combat Con, which is a meeting of different styles of martial arts. So historical European martial arts and all kinds of different stuff. So I've been teaching that. I teach some, but um, mostly and a lot of the stuff I say is radical. And like I said, I went through such a period of like, uh, well, you're dumb that I think I, you know, some bridges got burnt and things. So uh, I don't teach outside of my school all that much, um, but uh, I do have seminars at my school pretty regularly. Um, and now with the podcast, you know, so we've got a podcast now for Uh, over a couple of years and, and we've started building a following. So I think some stuff's starting to come out of that, but sure. um, yeah. And, and it's not, you know, like, like I said, you know, I've got to make a living. And so like everyone, you know, I do need to promote myself to a degree to make money um, to, to support my lifestyle. But at the same time, like I I'm, I'm so turned off by all the like money grubbing that I feel like went on before that it's like, as often as I can do things for cheap or free, I do it. And, you know, like, to everyone's chagrin around me who's like, why don't you charge more for that? But it's like, I, I love Aikido and I can't help but love it. And so I, I, I like to do it that no matter what. You know? Right. Well, uh, that finishes my official uh, list of questions, but just the, the last reflections I wanted to make. Uh, first, like the, the thing which probably stood out for me most, which I really appreciate you bringing to the table is that idea of Aikido being in a stage of infancy. I, I never, as, as simple, and in, in my language, we have a saying, the genius lies in the simple. And as simple as it sounds, I kind of never thought about it that way. And I think it's part of that is because of, uh, again, my personal opinion, but there's a bit of an, uh, in my experience, there's a bit of an elitist kind of uh, vibe coming from Aikido where, you know, we're that kind of, I'm the sensei and so on. And maybe that whole culture creates that sense of we already figured everything out and, you know, it's just others. They don't understand us. We're doing a good job. And maybe I got into that illusion, even myself to some degree, but now that you said it, it just makes absolute sense that this is the generation which has to figure it all out and uh, that it's, it's a process It's just my hopes and expectations, uh, my hopes, I guess, is that uh, more people will start to look at it that way because unless we, we recognize, I think I like a saying that the first, uh, the first big part of solving anything is admitting a problem or, right. or identifying yes. a problem. And I yes. think here it's kind of identifying that it's an infancy stage just opens up so many possibilities and ideas and so many pathways versus oh it's all done maybe we'll just tweak a few things but we're all good that just cuts any evolution so so I really like i really appreciate you bringing that to the, to the table awesome is there anything else you want to kind of summarize and uh, re re reflect about or say to the audience whoever is watching before we finish up Oh, no, that's, that's a, that's not a big question. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, you know, I, I really just think, you know, if you're into Aikido, uh, be open to what it is and don't think it's already, you know, all summed up. And, and also, like you just said a second ago, we kind of have to stop this guru mentality, you know, like, I'm a regular dude, right? I'm totally a regular dude. And I've said Aikido a long time, and I have a lot of opinions about it. And I like it, but I am in no way a perfect, immaculate human. And, and neither is anyone else. And, you know, maybe yeah. there is one, but I haven't met him if there is. <laughs> So, so it's like, that's the, that's the, the way we have to make it a little more grassroots and a little more blue collar and a little more like we're all working together and we're trying to figure this out because the promise of the system is great, right? Which is like the system that helps you become a better person through not creating more conflict, not attacking other people, but just being a good person. And like, that sounds great to me. I love that. And so, um, let's, let's develop that, you know, and, and let's, let's just accept where we are right now and move forward. Nice.